Well, today's news is certainly coming out of the blue. Apparently, Arkansas is interested in John Calipari. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Daw. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be discussing John Calipari in a very uh, unexpected light. Arkansas apparently is interested in bringing him over out of Lexington following Eric Musselman's departure to USC. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. And if you are listening on podcast, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. According to Trilly Donovan, who is a pretty solid college basketball insider, uh, online, he said in his Discord server earlier today, quote, all right, I'm just throwing this out there because I've heard it from three people now, all with varying degrees of reliability. Apparently, Hunter Yurichek, Arkansas's athletic director, is trying to reel in John Calipari. My first reaction to this was it simply can't be real. This just simply can't be actually happening and after going to talk with Trilly Donovan online about this he said quote I don't believe the info personally lol it's just kind of a wild rumor that I'm just having fun with no one really seems to know what's going on over there although I will point out here quickly that Trilly has in fact heard this information from three separate sources and Donovan every single time I've interacted with him has been right on the money when it comes to predicting head coaches and where they will land uh, days before it actually happens. Uh, He seems to have a lot of really good uh, insider knowledge, not just with coaches, but also with transfer portal players as well. So this is a very legitimate online source that is saying, personally, he doesn't believe it, but he's heard it from a few different people. Not really sure what's going on there. In today's episode, I kind of want to talk about just the, the possible reality of this. And then also... The possible reality of not Calipari leaving for Arkansas, but leaving to just go somewhere else, whether that be this offseason or whether that be next season in case he somehow miraculously decides, okay, instead of retiring or instead of getting fired, he actually wants to move on to somewhere else to end his coaching career. The, the reality here with Arkansas is kind of, I want to base everything off of what Trilly said. Personally, do I believe this is actually going to happen? Like I said a minute ago, no, I don't think that this is going to happen. But the fact that it has been confirmed that there is something going on here, I think is very interesting that Arkansas would even try and take a crack at somebody like Coach Cal. And I don't necessarily know what Arkansas is going for here, because if you go and look at their history, Eric Musselman and his five seasons with the Razorbacks took them to two Elite Eights in a Sweet 16 a couple of seasons ago. Had a 28-9 and nine season in 2022. Very solid year for the Hogs. Again, taking them to the Elite Eight in that season. If you go and look back all the way through 1997, which is as far back as Ken Palm goes, uh, the Razorbacks have not been past the round of 32 in that time frame. So Musselman has taken the Hogs to two different Elite Eights, something that they have not seen in a very long time. Took them to a Sweet 16, something that they've not seen to, in, in a very long time. And then he had a 16 and 17 season this past year, worst record with the Hogs uh, through his five seasons. And then he decided that he wanted to go to USC. In case you didn't know about Eric Musselman, Musselman started his coaching career at Nevada before going to Arkansas, had four seasons with the Wolfpack, three straight really, really good seasons, uh, had a sweet 16 berth there uh, in the middle as well. I believe he's done a lot of different coaching uh, and whether that be head coaching in the NBA with Golden State uh, or among various, uh, various, various assistant coaching jobs uh, out West. He has had most of his career occur out West. So him moving to USC doesn't necessarily shock me, although you really have something good going here with the Razorbacks, with your ability to recruit, with your ability to go into the transfer portal and get some pretty 
solid talent. I thought Arkansas this past year, I said it a ton, over and over and over. I think their talent level is higher than what their record indicates. I thought that that was a better team, maybe not as in a, a, an extremely cohesive product, but I thought it was a solid team. And I, I didn't really think that Musselman having a sub-500 year would really deter him from wanting to stay in Fayetteville. So it's kind of a kind of a weird move to me, but at the same time, I can also understand wanting to go back out west. Is USC the program you want to go and do it at? I'm not exactly sure if that's where you want to kind of go and try and spark some more success, especially with USC and UCLA heading to the Big Ten. I think that's going to be much difficult than much more difficult than whatever they would have had to face in the Pac-12, which is now being dissolved. But Musselman, he's gone. There's no there's no discussing that anymore. So now it really is just turning their attention to the next best thing they can get. Uh, Arkansas has already reached out to uh, Chris Beard. Chris Beard has made it clear that he's going to stay in Oxford with Ole Miss. They've reached out to Jerome Tang of Kansas State. Jerome Tang has made it very clear that he's staying at K-State K- after they offered him a contract extension. And now here you go with Coach Cal. I seriously doubt, seriously doubt, with the way that Cal has been talking about how he cares about Kentucky, how he cares about these kids, what he's built up here, this state as a whole, I would strongly doubt that Coach Cal would move elsewhere after saying all of these things following his loss in the first round to Oakland. I expect Coach Cal to come back this season and try some new things like he did this past year, try and get the defense working again, and try and rebuild Kentucky into a contender in the postseason, which the Wildcats have not been for the past half decade. So I find it interesting that Arkansas is at least making the attempt. I would assume that uh, at least they may have some sort of interest, some level of interest with Coach Cal but I don't think it's reciprocated here. Uh, At least I would strongly doubt it. That is just speculation, uh, just based on my opinion, based off what I have heard and seen. I'm I'm not holding anything back from you guys. This is just purely just my guess. I don't think Coach Cal is going to Arkansas. If he left Kentucky for Arkansas or if he left Kentucky for another school, I think that that would be a shock. But I think that there are some positive things that could still come out of it. Let's talk about the positives and negatives here of Coach Cal potentially leaving. Before we get into that, though, I do want to tell you guys about our friends over at Game Time. Let's say you want to go get some tickets to an MLB game uh, maybe uh, earlier in the week next week. I know the Atlanta Braves and the Cincinnati Reds are two of the favorite teams uh, of the people that listen to this show. Well, you need to go to Game Time because they have killer last-minute deals all in prices Views from your seat, and then they have their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I absolutely loved using game time during MLB and college football last season, and I'm certainly going to use them again here in the coming weeks to go check out the Atlanta Braves. Again, killer last-minute deals, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy MLB tickets for every kind of event in your area. You can get views from all seats in the venue, which is just absolutely phenomenal. And then their lowest price guarantee, which means if you find a ticket in the same section and row for less elsewhere, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on college college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, continuing along here on a short Saturday edition of Locked On Kentucky Lance Daw hanging out here with you discussing Coach Cal and the Arkansas Razorbacks according to Trilly Donovan, uh, who is a college basketball insider. You can find him on Twitter at Trilly Donovan. He has said in his private discord that Arkansas has interest, Hunter Juracek has interest, the athletic director there, has interest in John Calipari. And truly Donovan himself said, he doesn't believe the info personally, but it's kind of a wild rumor he's just having fun with. No one seems to really know what's actually going on over on at Arkansas, who has whiffed on their first couple of prospects, uh, coaching prospects, I should say. What will they do next? I'm not sure. All I know is that if this information does become officially public and it does start to make the rounds coach cal in arkansas 
I don't think it's going to be anything other than just something you chuck into the rumor mill. Uh, it's just kind of out there uh, for fun. And I figured I'd talk about it here today to really focus more on the reality that Coach Cal could this offseason or next offseason go elsewhere. And I don't, I don't necessarily mean to Arkansas. I just mean somewhere. If somebody's willing to throw the, 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 just an insane amount of money at him, there is a world where Coach Cal exits and goes to finish his career somewhere else. What would we as Kentucky fans feel in that moment? You can also, you can leave your thoughts on this in the comments below, whether you care, whether you don't, whether you think that this would be a good thing, whether you think this would be a bad thing. Leave all your thoughts in the YouTube comments below at Locked on UK on the socials. But I think that there are positives and there are negatives to this as well. So let's talk about the positives. If Coach Cal leaves or if he gets fired next season, when he departs, whether that be to another school or just off into the pasture, Kentucky's got a chance to land a really good head coach. That's just the reality. I know a lot of people view Coach Cal's inevitable departure from the program as scary. I know a lot of people have borderline Stockholm syndrome uh, with the way Cal has built this program up. People are so scared that Coach Cal leaving will bring Kentucky basketball down. And there's a world where that could happen. That's a possibility. Kentucky could absolutely whiff on their next hire in the next three to four seasons could just be nothing. That could happen. Very well could happen. But I think a lot of people overlook the fact that this program has not been Kentucky basketball for five years in a row. It's not been what you want out of the program for five straight seasons. Recruiting aside, you are not getting the results as a fan base that you expect to get out of this product, out of this program. It's not happening. So I think a lot of people are... Uh, it, like it, it's almost it's almost irrationally scared. I can understand the fear of whiffing on a hire because it's totally real. But also, there's the flip side of it, and this is what I, I think people also um, can get excited about. Look, Kentucky's got a chance to land a really, really good head coach. It's Kentucky. They've got money. They've got resources. They're historically the winningest program of all time. People would want to coach here. I don't find it. I I, I would find it incorrect to say nobody wants the responsibility of coaching Kentucky basketball. It's Kentucky. This is a great school and a great conference with great resources to win. Kentucky could take a really good head coach and find success. That's one of the positives. Take your pick to, as to who that is, by the way, because we have no idea. Then He's not left. We don't know who, who Kentucky would potentially be interested in. This has not happened, so just take your pick as to who you say it would be a good head coach that Kentucky could get because they very well could. They absolutely could. A negative here, and this is what a lot of people are saying. This kind of ties back into what I'm saying about how people are afraid of what happens when Cal leaves. Where does the recruiting go? Kentucky's 2024 recruiting class, according to 247 Sports, ranks second nationally. Three different five stars, one of them a true consensus five star uh, in Jaden Quaintance. The 17 year old played in the McDonald's All American game, looked solid. Boogie Fland also had some great moments in the McDonald's All American game, but you've got a five star in Jaden Quaintance. You've got a five star in six foot five guard Carter Knox, brother of former Kentucky Wildcat Kevin Knox. You've got five star Billy Richmond, who's a top 25 prospect as well. Travis Perry one of the winningest pro kids in a Kentucky high school basketball history. Great shooter. Sam Tosiro, 6'10", 244 star center, a physical specimen out of OTE in Atlanta. Again, like I mentioned, Boogie Fland, good shooter, good scorer overall. Kentucky's got a really good class coming in. Where does that go? I think that you will see players leave. I think that you will, would see players go with Cal. If he retires, I think Kentucky would have a much better chance to secure those players. He's not going to this offseason, by the way. Just throwing that out, that out there. But if a good recruiter comes in, let's flip this back to a positive. Okay, Kentucky loses a head coach. They could lose recruits. If a good recruiter comes in, which if you're getting a head coach, you would like to assume that he is also a good recruiter. Hey, look, 
Kentucky's got a chance to get some of those kids, flip some other kids from other schools, flip some kids from the school that the coach is coming from to Kentucky. There are opportunities here for Kentucky to find success with a new head coach. I understand the scare. I understand the fear. There is a possibility that things could go wrong if Coach Cal leaves. I think that there is just as much of a possibility as things going wrong as there is things going extremely well. In fact, I would lean towards things going well if Kentucky landed their coach, if they got a good hire. And again, you can pick who that is. I'm not even going to name a name on here. Pick who that is in your mind. A good coach that would be good for Kentucky. Kentucky has the chance to land them. Kentucky has the chance to recruit with them. Kentucky has the chance to be successful in the postseason like this fan base expects with that coach. That is a possibility. Just as much of a possibility as Kentucky whiffing on a hire, failing to recruit, falling to the middle of the pack in the SEC, or worse. There's just as much of a chance, if not a better chance, of Kentucky succeeding because of who they are. Positives. You got a shot to be better. Negatives. Pretty much here today, you've got a shot to be worse. Um, But at the same time, I kind of circle back here and say it again, you got a chance to be better. I don't know. So is Kentucky going to Arkansas, or excuse me, John Calipari going to Arkansas? No, I, I, I don't think that's happen, happening. If, they, if, if it does, we'll come back on the show and we'll freak out about it. Um, but I, I just, I don't see that happening. And if it does, uh, Kentucky's got a chance to turn things around here. At least I believe. So you can debate that in the comments below, whether you believe that, whether you disagree with it. Or you can hit me on the socials and, and discuss that as well. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Daw underscore. And you can find the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all on Monday for another episode of Locked on Kentucky. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And God bless.